morning. Um, well, Beersy and I, Beersy's my husband, if uh, you're new to St. Mary's, we have just scaled the back of our property to come up and uh, sit on this beautiful chair and uh, share, this, share this with you. I hope you guys are all doing okay. Um, my dad uh, was a plumber. He's retired now. He became a teacher later in life, but he was, for most of my childhood, a plumber. He was a tradie. So he spent most of his life in a pair of blue faded overalls. And in fact, I think the only time that I really saw dad not wearing his overalls was when we went to church. Um, but dad also had a workshop. His workshop was amazing. I spoke to Bezzy about, um, hubby about this as well. And he remembers his dad's workshop too. So maybe you remember your dad's workshop or your granddad's workshop. But remember it was like, almost like a sacred space. You knew that as soon as you stepped over the threshold, you were in a very special place. Um, there were four of us kids and man, we were rowdy. We used to fight and argue and we were, we were really rowdy kids. But when we stepped into dad's workshop, we were so well behaved. Um, yeah, we would be like, don't touch anything. We didn't want to mess anything up. Um, sometimes when we were, we'd sneak in when dad wasn't there and we'd play with the vice. Do you, do you know what I'm talking about? Like it was on the workbench and we'd you'd put something in it and you'd wind it up and see how tightly you could, you know, squeeze that. Oh. Hours of fun. Kids these days would have no idea. Honestly, hours of fun. But we'd always make sure that we put the vice back or anything that we touched, we'd always make sure it was back to how we found it because we knew that we just had to treat Dad's workshop with real respect and we were lucky enough to be in there as well. We sort of knew that when Dad was like, oh, come and help me out, you'd be like, yes, I get to go into the workshop. Um, things were created in that workshop too. Things were fixed. Our bikes were fixed, cars were fixed, toys were created. Dad made us toys when we were kids. He made furniture as well. So yeah, that, that workshop, and Bears uh, remembers the same. Things being created and fixed in Dad's workshop and, and having to really uh, know that we had to really respect that space. And I just had this memory, I don't know if your dad had this, but there was a can of slime at the door. And when dad had finished his work in the workshop, he'd get the pole, like there was a pole stuck in the can and he'd get the slime and he'd put it on his hands and he'd, he'd wash his hands and that would get all the grease and stuff off it. Was it, is it Schwarzfeger or something? It had that, that smell to it. Anyway, Jesus was a tradie too. Um, Jesus and his brothers and his dad and I think we've all kind of landed on the fact that they were builders they stonemasons so they would have had tools and um, and I like to imagine that they had a workshop as well and if we just imagine now for a moment what Jesus's workshop would be like like let's pr just pretend let's just use our imaginations and imagine it's like 27 AD and Jesus says to us, I need a hand. Can you come into my workshop? I think, like me, you would be like, wow, we're in Jesus' workshop. We'd better be careful. Like, you don't want to mess anything up in the king's workshop, right? You don't want to be trashing the king's workshop. You would be, we would be like little children just knowing that we were not allowed to touch anything. We'd be so well behaved. From that to this, the reading this morning is from John chapter 1, verses 1 through to 3. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. I think we should read that again. In the beginning, sounds familiar. In the beginning was the Word, 
and the Word was with God. And the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through Him, all things were made. Without Him, nothing was made that has been made. Jesus was there at the beginning, creating. Creation is Jesus' workshop. And I just wonder if we tread as lightly in Jesus' creation, in his workshop, as we did when we were imagining being invited into his workshop. We wouldn't dare mess anything up in his workshop, but I just wonder, do we have that same kind of level of understanding and respect in the King's creation? The call to do our bit for climate change is overwhelming because it's so big, isn't it? The problem is just so big. And we know and we've heard every little bit counts and that is encouraging. But I just wonder if deep down inside, we don't really believe that our little bit does actually count when we see the bigness of the problem. But can I just offer this? Because we are Christians, we get to see things differently. Through the Holy Spirit, we are in Christ. And because of that, we have a personal relationship with the living King. So everything is personal. And I think for our family, seeing it that way makes a massive difference to the steps that we take. So, you know, when we wash out our recycling and put it in the recycling, that's not a little thing. That's personal. That's personal to the king. When we choose to fix something rather than chucking it into the landfill, that's not a little thing. That's personal. It's personal to Jesus. Um, at the moment, the Dio is running a zero carbon challenge and um, there are heaps of suggestions and heaps of encouragement of how we can do our, do our bit. Um, but it can seem overwhelming. And I think because it's overwhelming, we, we don't really take a step. Because does every little thing, is every little thing that we're doing, does it really count? Well, every little thing is personal. It's personal to Jesus. The other, the other reason why we might not take those new steps or challenge ourselves is apathy. We just might not, we just might not care enough. We might think, oh, well, other people, other people are going to do that. And they'll be really good at that. That's their passion. We'll let them do that. And we might go, well, you know, because I'm really focused on this part of the kingdom. But I, I don't know. I, this is Jesus' workshop. Everything is personal to Jesus. And that's what our family is being challenged with at the moment. That being overwhelmed and having apathy um, is, stopping, is stopping us from really mucking in and understanding that everything is personal to the King. The Christian hope is not that we get to leave this place. The Christian hope is that Jesus is coming. That's the Christian hope. I read a lot of N.T. Wright. He's a theologian. Um, and he, he has just this lovely way of making things easy to understand. And he says, the last scene of the Bible isn't saved souls going up to heaven in the sky. The last scene of the Bible is the new Jerusalem coming from heaven to earth. God dwelling with humanity. That's the last scene of the Bible. The Christian hope is not that 
um, the, the earth is going to burn and we just get to leave. The Christian hope is that Jesus is coming. Everything we do is personal to Jesus. Everything we do matters to the second coming. So I thought what we could do is um, spend some time, just a little bit of time with the Holy Spirit and asking the Holy Spirit to be with us and to reveal where we have, um, through our being overwhelmed or through apathy, have not treated lightly in Jesus' workshop. Where have we not been respectful of the King's workshop? So let's do that now. Holy Spirit, welcome. Jesus, we are sorry for all the times that we have not treated lightly. We, we have not respected your creation. We are sorry for all of those times where we have opted out thinking it's someone else's job. We're sorry. Father, thank you for your forgiving love. Thank you that when we confess and change our way of thinking, that you are there with us. Holy Spirit, we ask that you continue to illuminate where in our lives we can step into a deeper personal relationship with the King. Not just in a few parts of our life, but in all of our life with you, Jesus. That we are here in your creation. Thank you for your forgiveness. Thank you for your redemption. Amen.